Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics industry leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur built and light sport aircraft. Today's topic Skyview System Operation of the Autopilot using the Simplified Control Scheme. Today I'd like to demonstrate how to use the Skyview's integrated autopilot utilizing the simplified control scheme. This is the simple version of the autopilot controls intended uh, mostly for VFR pilots. It makes use of the autopilot extremely simple uh, access, accessing just a single menu. To start with, I'm going to ask access autopilot, which is button 4 from Skyview's main menu. Pressing button 4 labeled autopilot reveals the single autopilot menu in this control scheme and notice the autopilot is currently engaged but four now is green and it shows the first of two control modes for the autopilot labeled track plus out. In this mode the autopilot is following both the blue track bug on the directional gyro and the blue altitude bug on the altimeter. The, the digital value of our altitude is at the top of the altimeter labeled 3500 feet and the digital value for my track bug, currently 352 degrees, located about the 7 o'clock position of the directional gyro. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot for a moment. Autopilot disconnect. You hear an audible alert there, and notice that uh, button 4 is now black, indicating it's the uh, autopilot is no, no longer engaged. On the upper left-hand portion of the display in the status bar, we also saw a yellow enunciation, indicating the autopilot was disconnecting. Now while I'm flying along, I'm going to move my track bug to some other heading and using the controllable knob, I'm going to select the altitude function momentarily and select a different altitude for my bug value. See here, now I have 4,400 feet in there, restoring to my track control. Um, actually, before we move forward, I want to point out, notice with the autopilot disconnected, the label assignment for my knob, which controls the bug on the directional gyro, currently is labeled heading. That's because we normally think of that as a heading mode. When I engage the autopilot in the track plus altitude mode, the label for that knob will switch to track. That's because the autopilot will be following the drug, the bug as if it were a GPS ground track bug. Now I'm going to press button 4 to engage the autopilot. Notice the, bug, the, the label for button 4 turns green, indicating the autopilot is engaged. In the status bar, uh, the autopilot enunciation says track mode 344 degrees, altitude hold mode 3500 degrees. Notice that when the mode was engaged, the autopilot automatically synchronized both bugs to the aircraft's current values. And again, pointing out on the directional gyro, the bug was not synchronized to my magnetic heading, but rather to my current GPS ground track. In this mode, track plus out, the autopilot is following uh, the GPS ground track and making that our uh, path over the ground. Now the second menu option in the simplified control scheme is labeled HSI plus ALT. Uh, this mode is somewhat similar. It will, it will hold our altitude, but rather than following the bug on the directional gyro, it's going to follow the course line. Notice I already have a nav source assigned to my HSI and I have a current needle uh, which shows that I'm currently off course to the right. I'm going to press button 5 leveled HSI plus ALT. Autopilot mode. The autopilot gives me both an audible enunciation and it changes the status to the status bar to show we're now following GPS. Notice the autopilot is establishing a left hand turn. It will set up an intercept for our course line on the HSI. Now similar to the first mode, the autopilot synchronized my altitude bug to my current altitude, rounded to the nearest 100 feet. So we're uh, holding altitude at 3,500, and see here the autopilot has established about a 30 degree intercept to that course line on the HSI. Now to avoid uh, heading towards airspace, I'm going to switch back to the track mode, track plus out. And I'm going to rotate my track bug using the left knob, and we're going to turn back towards the north here, and we'll explore the last two uh, autopilot controls on this menu. Notice here, the autopilot is momentarily enunciating the need for nose-up trim. That's a, 
uh, common in a, in a turn. As we all know, as pilots, when we roll the airplane, we lose some lift. The autopilot senses that as an out of trim condition. You can trim the nose up, but once the autopilot rolls this house smoothly, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a nose down trim enunciation. Okay, the autopilot has rolled out again, establishing ground track on my buck. We're in the track plus alt mode labeled green. Now I want to talk about buttons 6 and 7. These are two additional modes available in the autopilot. Uh, they're not directly related to uh, following a course or path over the ground. Rather, they're intended for special circumstances. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the level button. The level button is intended for use when the pilot simply needs help controlling the airplane. He might feel like he's losing control or, or becoming spatially disoriented. He might recognize he's already in an unusual attitude. Pressing the level button is just a quick way to immediately have the op autopilot take control of the aircraft. I'm going to start by disabling autopilot, pressing button 4 to turn off the track to us out. There's an audible enunciation and again the visual enunciation on the status bar. Okay, I'm now hand flying. Now I'm going to maneuver the aircraft a bit. A um, bit of a roll to the left. Now I'm going to roll back to the right, establish a climbing right hand turn. Fairly significant pitch up, airspeed's decaying. Now I'm going to press the level button and let go of the controls. Altitude. Ah. Notice that the airplane, the autopilot has immediately commenced rolling the aircraft to wings level and it has lowered the nose to a level flight attitude. Now notice in our enunciation area on the status bar and we're calling straight and level. In the roll axis, the autopilot doesn't aim uh, to follow the bug or the needle, rather it simply flies the aircraft in a bank angle zero condition or straight in the roll axis. Trim, Trim up. Now in the pitch axis, the autopilot again ignores the altitude bug and it rather lowers the nose or raises the nose as necessary to establish vertical speed zero. Here's our VSI indicator here. I want to stress that uh, it doesn't aim for a specific altitude. That's because the autopilot could, or the airplane could be in a, a fairly rapid climb or descent. Uh, we don't want to overshoot an altitude and, and dive or climb back to it. We merely want to get the, um, the aircraft under control. I would also stress that the autopilot uses essentially the same methodology when the level mode is activated as the pilot is trained to do uh, when recovering from an unusual attitude. And that is, again, roll wings level first, then pitch for a level attitude. I'm going to disconnect the level mode. Oh, I want to uh, point out one additional component. I'm going to press button 2 to turn off that mode. I want to also point out there's one additional method of uh, activating the level mode, and that is by wiring it to a, a dedicated button on the instrument panel. In Eric aircraft we have such a button it's currently out of control but by pushing that remote button on the instrument panel it instantly activates the level mode. It's a great way to have quick access to the level function no matter what uh, uh, menu you might have displayed at any given time. Autopilot disconnect. Okay now, again I've disconnected the autopilot. Now the last mode I want to point out is button 7 labeled 180 degrees. This mode is intended for use by the pilot when he simply wants to reverse course. A, a, a very common example would be inadvertent flight into IMC. I don't know for sure where I want to go, but I know the weather was blast good behind me. When I press the 180 degree button, a couple things will happen. Pressing button 7. Notice that button turns green, but also the track plus altitude button turns green. Those modes are related. First of all, the autopilot again synchronizes my altitude bug to my current altitude. It sets the bug there and it will hold that altitude. It also commences a 180 degree turn. First, it synchronizes the heading or track bug, not to uh, my current GPS ground track, but, but to the reciprocal. And it commences, in most cases, a left-hand turn to intercept that bug. Now we're going to be turning into the sun here. I hope the camera view is okay. The autopilot will proceed on through the turn a full 180 degrees. As we approach the track bug and the directional gyro, you'll see that the 180 degree uh, menu button will in fact turn black and the autopilot, it's just done that now, and the autopilot will now continue on in the track plus out mode. Uh, 
Now, uh, I'm going to, uh, using the track bug, I'm going to turn us back away from the sun so we're no longer staring right into that. And uh, talk about just a few more uh, features of the autopilot, namely how to disengage the autopilot. You've already seen me uh, use two methods on screen. First is by pressing the menu button for the mode, which is currently labeled green. So I'll do that now. You'll see me turn off the oh track with altitude mode this by pressing that button. I'm hand flying now. Now I'm going to restore that mode. I'll press that mode on and the autopilot will fly this heading in altitude. Second, notice that button 2 is labeled off. Pressing button 2 will disconnect the autopilot regardless of which of the other, which of the four mode buttons are enabled. Pressing button 2 Auto now, I get my audible enunciation and the yellow enunciation in the status bar. Yellow flashing means that the autopilot is disconnected. Turning the autopilot on once again. The last common mode for disengaging the autopilot is the uh, disconnect switch located either on the control stick or the control wheel. I'll press that now, which is out of view of the camera. Autopilot disconnect. And the autopilot is disconnected. Okay, I think we've covered it all. I hope you've seen that the uh, Skyview's integrated autopilot is extraordinarily simple to operate in, uh, when using this simplified control scheme. Two primary modes on buttons four and five, and two special modes for special circumstances to help the pilot uh, when he um, just wants things stabilized. Thanks for joining us. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com, where you can find links to our system installation guides, pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.